Okay, so on robotics, so uh, we heard lots about nice data and information, but uh, we have to transform this data and this information into real products and buildings. So um, I, in my opinion, the secret weapon is the robot. So, um, and also uh, before it was already mentioned, we have to rethink the process. And so what I came up with about 30 years ago was this kind of robot-oriented design notion after having analyzed about 50 prototypic robot system, mostly in Japan. So um, now you can also read it, this Cambridge University Press. And um, so what is important is that we have the reliable product performance for the whole life cycle. And um, this can be ensured by robotics. It's, it's, it's e easy in the factory where you produce your products and your materials, no problem. But one, once you get on the construction side, the nightmare starts. Just look at the Berlin airport, for example. And uh, what we also need to do is um, we need to, to structure everything very clearly. We need a product hierarchy, a process hierarchy, like, like other industries are doing, car industry, aircraft industry, and so on. And we might do a little bit more in the factory and less on the construction side in the future. So, um, and then we have to design uh, for, uh, Actually, the chance is that we can come up with new products for new markets. And um, here you see the first uh, automated construction site. I was working on it for a couple of years. And um, we could assemble the, this, the whole building automatically with about 20 robots working simultaneously. So the speed was very fast. And new joining systems. So plug and play, you snap something in. It's not so much about bolting or welding, it's a new type of joining system. And this was the fastest one we did. The, the Chinese Ministry of Construction asked me about 14 years ago to advise two companies in China to be faster than the Japanese. So what we did was um, we did, for example, a 50-story building in three weeks. It's possible. But this company was a special company. It was not a typical Chinese construction company. But it's possible to do it, and, and it was uh, available, and you could move in this high rise of 50 stories after three weeks. Okay, so um, also we need to further push on the prefabrication, the industrialized prefabrication of components. And we can also increase the customization now because robots are very flexible. They can do almost anything. They're just like a human arm as long as you are in the factory. And here's one example, uh, one of many for a prefabricated brick wall, because like in Germany, the customer likes bricks. So here we did a complex uh, brick wall, which had everything finished already. The pipes were in there, the services, the windows, everything. So you just place the wall on the construction site and even the plumber did not need to come anymore because the pipes were already in there. Uh, this is maybe the highest degree of prefabrication uh, in Japan, 85%. The factory looks like, almost like a car factory. And uh, it's not a monotonous product anymore. There are about two million parts you can compose your product. This you cannot handle anymore manually. It's possible because of computerization. And, of course, you can also get the best from two worlds, like designing individual products now because of 3D printing. Of course, here we need also new tools because the printers are too slow. So we have to develop new tools for the construction industry. And on site, this is now what, what, where the nightmare starts normally, um, because even the best made prefabricated products, the, when, when they end up on the construction site and then are properly processed further, you have a big mess, you have lots of quality problems. So here, um, if you control the whole process, like computer integrated construction, you control it with robot, the final assembly on the construction side, you can guarantee the same quality as it was when the product left the factory. Uh, for example, here's some kind of uh, assembly robots for facades, for interior walls, for, for form work, and so on. Uh, for interior finishing, which is very difficult to do, you have uh, lots of small tasks to do. And overhead work is also not good for the worker uh, ergonomically, so it's better to let it be done by the machine. And, um, and in, once the building is finished, uh, inspection robots, uh, painting robots, cleaning robots, maintenance, and so on. 
And this is just a vision. Um, uh, but exactly 33 years ago, Tokyo had a huge problem. It was uh, high land prices, the highest in the world. And uh, now we have similar problems in London and in Paris, Barcelona, and Milano. So um, the only way to solve this problem is by increased rationalization through robotics. And time is money, of course. Um, so we need fast return on investment and as planned quality, instant availability of the product. And, and this can only be guaranteed by robotic final construction on the construction site. And here you see the one of the automated site, the first one. Um, it's a different kinematic. It's not an industrial robot anymore. There are specialized new type of kinematics, <coughs> which will also, once they're being developed, uh, generate a totally new market for, for the European industry. And, um, and this building moves up, uh, and it looks as almost finished. It is also a good image, because nowadays also the construction industry has a bad image, because it's dusty, it's noisy, it's dirty. And here the construction site look perfect. They are quiet. They have around 50 decibel noise, and there is no emission, and so on, because it's just a clean, as programmed, the robots execute. Okay, here's some kind of integration of single task robots. There are about 500 systems that have been developed, and we documented about 300 in our Cambridge <coughs> book series. And here are some examples of concrete finishing robot, logistic robot. Uh, logistics is a big thing because the, the, the Swedish Con Contractors Association found out that sometimes construction workers, even on very good organized Scandinavian sites, which are a little bit better than the average European site, they are um, searching for the construction material, searching for tools, searching for something. Up between 30 and 70% of the time, the construction worker is not efficient. Um, so, and also uh, going into reverse for deconstruction, it's not about demolition, it's not about implosion. Now with robotics, you can systematically disassemble buildings. And, uh, for example, here, the first disassembly sites uh, a couple of years ago um, of high-rises, you can recycle 93% of the whole building without downgrading the material because you really uh, disassemble it. For example, the gypsum wallboards are disassembled in a dry manner so you can really recycle it and reuse it because there is no water spraying in order to avoid the dust because it's really... Everything is encapsulated and disassembled. So the robotic construction goes into reverse. It goes into deconstruction. Uh, same for tunneling, for example. Now, who wants to work in a tunnel? I mean, I've been to many tunnel sites. It's not nice there. The air is bad. It's hot. It's like in a submarine. So it can be done automatically. There is no worker anymore. So you bring in the, the, the tunnel segments and you assemble it. And maybe the next frontier might be even space, uh, <coughs> space construction, space colony, moon colony, Mars colony, whatsoever. And what we need actually is we need this kind of innovation leap because I'm, I'm following now the construction industry the more than three decades and it's, I, I'm getting disappointed <laughs> because nothing is moving ahead. So we really have to come up with a kind of innovation leap. And... Um, what I guess it's, um, what I would do is, for example, I would, I would initiate, like, let's say, 80 flagship projects in the na next 15 years. I would at least take about 5 billion euro. It sounds a lot, but it's not. If you just consider the cost overrun of the Berlin airport, it's more than 5 billion already. The airport should be finished six years ago. We don't know when we can finish it. So just if you would take this money of the cost overrun of the Berlin airport, we can do something revolutionary in Europe and um, for, 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 the, for new professions, it will also generate new professions. So we don't need to worry that the robot might take it away. On the contrary, we'll have new professions and new markets if we develop these processes with robots. Okay. So here, if you, further reading. Um, uh, just came out two years ago, and now I'm writing the fifth volume, but the interesting volumes for you are the first four volumes. You can already buy it with Cambridge University, and there are about 300 systems described, much more than I can show here. Yeah, that's it, so I'm ready for questions later. Thank you.